Hi, Mystery Recapped here. Today, I am going to explain a Japanese superhero film called Inuyashiki. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Ichiro Inuyashiki is a normal salaryman doing his best to keep his family happy. But his family takes all his effort for granted and often treats him like trash. Ichiro has recently bought a new house in a better neighborhood for their sake. His daughter Mary and son Takeshi are delighted to see a big house and mistake it for their own. They accidentally try to enter it but are told their house is the tiny one by the side. It is the best Ichiro could have done with the money he saved for years, but the children do not care. In an attempt to lighten the mood, he tells them he bought their favorite food, but no one pays attention. Instead, they go out to dinner, leaving Ichiro behind to eat alone. One day, Ichiro works overtime and returns home late. In a dark alleyway, he sees a group of muggers beating a man for money. He thinks of helping the man but is too cowardly to actually do it. Just when he turns around, he sees Mary watching him in disappointment. She reminds him that he is a disgusting coward before storming off. Back home, Ichiro sits in front of their house, thinking about life. Suddenly, a dog walks toward him, wanting to be petted. Its caller says, her name is Hanako, please take care of her. Ichiro pities the dog, but his wife wants him to get rid of it. She also hands him his medical report, which says that he needs one more checkup. The next day, Ichiro goes to the hospital and finds out he has third stage cancer. It has spread throughout his body, which gives him only a few months to live. Overwhelmed by the news, he calls his wife, but she ends the call before he can tell her the news, while his children do not even pick up their phones. Later, Ichiro takes Hanako on a walk and wonders if his family will even cry when they know about his cancer. With a heavy heart, he leaves Hanako by the side of the road and runs away to a park. To his surprise, the animal follows him there. Seeing that he is the only one who cares about him, Ichiro cries while apologizing to the dog. Some seconds later, he notices another man sitting on a park bench in front of him. Suddenly, a bright light flashes in the sky and continues getting bigger. Something large falls from the sky, hitting Ichiro and the man beside him, causing their immediate death. The next day, however, Ichiro wakes up in the park, right where he had landed yesterday. Hanako is beside him on the ground. He picks up his glasses but realizes he can see clearly even without them. Not knowing what to do, he continues about his day. At home, his hand turns into a weapon-like device and vomits out the breakfast he had just eaten. He is even more horrified when his face disintegrates to reveal an electric system inside his head. One part after another, his entire body turns into a machine. It turns out that the strange object killed Ichiro last night. It was a mistake on the part of the aliens who were flying the object. So, they revived him as a machine with emotions. He now possesses superhuman strength and the power of any machinery in the world. All that potential and he'll probably just end up browsing TikTok. The man who was with him yesterday, named Hiro, also received the superpower. He goes to his friend Naoyuki's house and shoots a bird with his fingers. He then brings a surprised Naoyuki to a parking lot and showcases how he can move vehicles with his mind. Naoyuki is baffled by Hiro's power and feels like he is in a dream. Meanwhile, Ichiro is still confused about this morning. On his way home, he sees an injured pigeon on the side of the road. As he goes to pick it up, his hands heal the bird and it flies away. Just then, his heightened hearing power causes him to hear a mother pleading with doctors to save her son. He follows the sound and finds a sick kid on the hospital bed. As he touches his face, the kid starts to heal like the pigeon. Ichiro gladly tells the kid that he has recovered and returns home happily. The next day, Naoyuki is bullied by his classmates. Hiro intervenes and tries to kill the bully until Naoyuki stops him. Naoyuki sees that the power has made Hiro violent, which scares him. Shion is a girl from Hiro's class who has a crush on him. That day, she tells him that she likes him, leaving Hiro in shock. After that, we are introduced to his mother, who is a waitress in a restaurant. His father is a rich man who left his mother for another woman. Hiro doesn't like his father but still goes to meet him and his other family for dinner. Hiro's step-siblings like him and are always excited to see him but he could never like them back, thinking of his poor mother. 
It is almost midnight when Hiro is walking back home. He hears the sound of a family which reminds him of his dad's new life. Enraged with anger, he breaks into the family's home, kills the parents, and chases the daughter down the hallway. While he uses his power for revenge, Ichiro heals many children in the hospital. The murder makes headlines the next day. Since no bullets were found, now Yuki is afraid his friend is behind the murder. When they meet, Hiro offers him a large amount of money. The boys get into an argument because of it. Now Yuki cannot believe how easy it is for Hiro to kill innocent people. He does not want to be his friend anymore. Hiro is devastated by Naoyuki's comment. He returns home, still in shock, only to find that his mother has pancreatic cancer. He begins to cry in her arms, promising her that he will not let her die. Meanwhile, at Ichiro's home, his son is found stealing money from his mother's purse, and Mary says she doesn't want to go to university. The household is in chaos when Ichiro tells everyone that he will protect all of them. Laughing at her father's stupidity, Mary tells him that Takeshi is being bullied at school, and her mother has an affair with a younger man. She wants to make him feel worse than she does, which works efficiently. That night, Ichiro cries alone in his room. Suddenly, he hears now Yuki praying to God to stop his friend from killing people. Ichiro realizes he is talking about Hiro and flies to him. They talk for a while and figure out that Ichiro and Hiro were reformed by some form of higher life. Now Yuki offers to train Ichiro so he can stop Hiro from killing more people. Although they possess the same powers, Hiro can use his abilities more efficiently than Ichiro. The next day, they meet in an abandoned garage where now Yuki teaches Ichiro to shoot through his fingers. After trying repeatedly, Ichiro finally succeeds but needs more practice. Meanwhile, Hiro and his mother are at the doctor's, where he tells them that her cancer cells have disappeared. Both the doctor and Hiro's mother are surprised. On their way back home, six policemen surround them. They are there to interrogate Hiro about the murders. As his mother asks him what her son has done, Hiro makes a run for it. The policemen catch him, but he is able to escape using his powers. Eventually, he shoots three of the policemen dead. It is clear to them that Hiro is the one behind the murders. His pictures are all over the news the next day. The same day, his friend Shion finds him on a bridge and brings him home. She doesn't care about the people he has killed and allows him to stay with her for as long as she wants. She lives with her grandmother, which makes it easier for Hiro to hide in their house. Meanwhile, Ichiro has mastered shooting from his fingers. As days go by, they realize that water acts as fuel to Ichiro's power, but he is allergic to sodium water. Since Hiro is in hiding, the media starts attacking his mother. She gets death threats on the internet and is harassed on the streets. Hiro sees his mother on the TV and can't help but cry. When the guilt is too much for her to handle, she commits the unthinkable. Hiro gets to know about this through a news channel and is devastated. His sadness changes into anger and he makes it his mission to kill every single person who talked bad about his mother. He soon finds out that he can shoot people through their phones and computers using the internet. He hunts down every single person who comments on his mother and kills them through their devices. Ichiro has become a troll hunter. That night, Hiro shows Shion his robotic arm to prove that he is not a human. He takes her in his arms and flies with the help of his parachute. While flying over the skyscrapers, he promises to be there with her forever. The unsolved murders shake the entire nation, making people go into a frenzy. Five people who survived the attempted murder tell the press that they saw Hiro on their phone screens before they were shot. That night, Shion is in her kitchen when suddenly, a group of snipers starts firing. Hiro kills all of them but is unable to save a dying Shion. The house is surrounded by the police. After Shion, Hiro has no one to live for. His head goes numb and is filled with the feeling of vengeance. Within seconds, he flies away through the window. The police cannot even comprehend what just happened. Ichiro finds out what Hiro is doing and urges his family to not use smartphones and stay at home for the day. But, as usual, they do not obey him. Hiro hacks every single smartphone in Tokyo and tells the people that he has declared war against Japan. He plans to kill all 120 million people until no one is left. After the declaration, he doesn't waste time before firing openly through the billboard. Hundreds of people die within a minute and the city plunges into chaos. Meanwhile, Ichiro and Naoyuri take over Hiro and hack all the computers. They inform everyone to stay off their smartphones and computers. Their plan works and people stop using their phones. Hiro finally realizes there is another person like him and decides to change his plan a bit. He starts dropping several missiles on different parts of the city. 
As the chaos intensifies, Ichiro figures out Hiro's location and rushes to stop him. The two come face to face on the top of a skyscraper. Ichiro tries to calm Hiro down, but to no avail, they fly through the sky of Tokyo while battling. Hiro's missile injures many innocent people, one of them being Mary. Ichiro hears Mary begging for help while he is on the run. After an intense fight, they land on top of a building. Ichiro again requests that Hiro stop, but he refuses. When Hiro tries to drink water from a bottle, Ichiro shoots it down and slyly drops the bottle with sodium water in it. Not knowing the effects of sodium, Hiro chugs the water down. He then bombards Ichiro with missiles in the air. He is about to kill Ichiro with the last shot when the sodium water makes him weak. While falling down from the height, Hiro realizes that he is the villain of the story. In the meantime, Ichiro comes down to save his daughter and finds her amidst the remains of a building. She is on the verge of dying when he uses his powers to save her. But as they celebrate, Hiro arrives again and kicks Ichiro. Mary also gets shot in the process. Hiro overpowers Ichiro before throwing Mary out the window. This angers Ichiro and multiplies his robotic powers. Both Hiro and Ichiro leap at each other, but this time, Ichiro's strength overpowers Hiro's and disassembles his arm. Following that, Ichiro catches Mary in the air and saves her. Mary realizes she has been wrong about her father and watches him save other people in admiration. A week after the incident, the press declares Hiro dead. Ichiro is now respected in his family, mostly by his daughter. And all it took was to gain some superpowers and murder a guy. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.